All right, again, good evening for people who have registered for this webinar, as well as my YouTube audience who will be here for the first section of this recording. This, as usual, is part three of um, our um, advanced COVID-360, Upper Airway as First Line of Defense, and will be focused on understanding just how important the upper airway immunity is with regards to preventing severe disease. And it's a really important principle. People get confused about infection versus infection that breaks through the mucosal barrier. Really critical to understand the difference. So this is part of what we'll be looking at now. Um, as usual, before we start, there will be a link in terms of the um, in the description. If you're on YouTube, this is going to be as usual for Humming Heroes. We've got now just three days to go. We are trying to get this at number one on Amazon, and so we've got lots of interest. People are getting the ebook looking forward to the soft cover hard cover which will come in time so as i said here just three days to go really fascinating book and uh, as i said if you just look at what's in it it's lots of information not just about the story but also explaining the story lovely imagery as well so this is about immunology and bringing it into a, a story format so yes we really hope that you will join us in this process Additionally, as we are recording this Advanced 360, so that you are aware, it's in the pre-launch phase. And so that means that you will get it at a significant discount. Now, this is going to be a huge course. And for the people who are with me um, doing the recording, they'll get to see and ans ask the questions that help to build it. Um, so, so far, you can see that we've gone through part one, looking at the virus. Uh, and variants and so on. We looked at part two, talking about the immune system, specifically about uh, antibodies, including IgG4 and so on. And now we're coming to part three, which is the um, upper airway. And so the, you can see below this, the next part is my focus really about the autoimmune response, which is critical to understanding what's happening in COVID-19. So look out for the link in the description. It will be there. Um, and finally, the most important point um, is right here. I've got a video up here on um, Vision Health. This one was Gert's video. And the reason I've brought it is because a lot of people have been saying that they can't find the subscribe button. I don't know if this is deliberate on the part of people who are trying to silence what it is that I'm sharing. But what I've done here is I've added a button on the right hand side in the bottom. If you just hover over it with your mouse pointer, you will see the subscribe link come up and then you'll be able to easily subscribe. Additionally, if you look down at the bottom here in the description, this is where you will see all of the other information that we have around the videos. And that's where you'd also see links as well to uh, various courses and so on that we do. So that's it for our updates. And uh, what we'll do is get straight into uh, the first part of our Advanced 360 or part three, the first module. At the end of that first module, if you're on YouTube, we're going to let you go. But the people who have been with me um, registered for the webinar will be, be there afterwards. And next week, I'll be doing another recording. And that one is on, on autoimmunity. But look out again for the links in the next few days. So um, let's get ready to start. In this next section, part three, upper airway as first line of defense, we are looking at understanding just how the virus SARS-CoV-2 interacts with our upper airway. One of the critical things that was missed in the pandemic is the importance of mucosal immunity, that first line of defense that prevents the invaders getting through to the castle. That's the example that I've used in the previous uh, section. As usual, I'll always put up our disclaimer, all the content, the website, social media, this is not medical 
information in terms of for directly for your health. This is information for you to understand about diseases. But if you are sick, you must call your doctor, go to the emergency department. So that's just simple advice for everyone. Additionally, the battle against COVID begins in the upper airway, the body's first line of defense or immunological defense. So what we're going to cover in this course here, just the basics of the upper airway anatomy, looking at secretory IgA and mucosal immunity, looking at the epipharyngeal region and that link that it has to possibly long COVID, just a mention of it, but um, we'll cover that in more detail separately, as well as sinus disease. And the final bit that's not in there is looking at exactly what happens in the early phase of inflammation with regards to SARS-CoV-2 in the lungs. As usual, we start with basic stuff. So when we think about uh, the virus, you must always remember this is about what it looks like. This globular um, thing, it has the spike proteins on the top in blue. There are the envelope and membrane proteins dotted, which the immune system can recognize. And the spike proteins, usually on the surface of a virus, there are about 25 spike proteins. Every one of them can attach to ACE2 and get in. There are other receptors it can use, but primarily ACE2. They tend to flip between the closed and open position, as we had mentioned in previous parts when we looked at the characteristics of the virus. This is the cut section of the virus, and inside is the RNA. This single strand of RNA, this is then replicated to make the proteins and then reassemble into new viral particles for which it can spread. So this is the virus as we have it, and this is where we start from. And again, the principles are simple. In order for the virus to cause infection, it has to get into the upper airway. Once it gets in here and it can replicate in the upper area, usually in the naso nasopharyngeal region and specifically even the epipharyngeal region, close to where the adenoids used to be, which we'll show you in a different slide um, at a later time, the virus then goes here, replicates, and then spreads both out and down into the lungs. And um, in, from the lungs, it can break through and get into the bloodstream or the systemic um, immune system. This is an example of the immune defense that you would have with regards to the virus. And I've got here just a layer of cells, and this represents the mucosal layer. It's a physical layer, and critically, right at the top is mucus. And this mucus makes the it makes it difficult for the virus to get to the cells but in the case of SARS-CoV-2 which we'll show later on it tends to attach onto these cilia go down it and then enter the cell so within the mucus layer you have the epithelial cells you have these goblet cells here that will produce mucus and underneath this mucosal layer this physical layer you then have the immune defense it's not exactly like this, but I've, I've used this to demonstrate the fact that you'll have monocytes, you'll have natural killer cells, you'll have B cells, you'll have neutrophils, you'll have um, uh, T cells, you'll have uh, dendritic cells, you'll have mast cells. All of this is part of that defense. So you have a physical defense, then you have an immune defense. The two work together and try and prevent any virus, not just SARS-CoV-2, from breaking through this barrier. This is why you don't get a cold all the time or, or flu because you're exposed to viruses all the time, but you don't necessarily end up with an infection. And that's because of the very sophisticated function of that mucosal immune defense. Here you have an important point about mucosal immunity. It does fluctuate. And this is one of the reasons why I advise people to be cautious when they think about what's happening with regards to the pandemic. I have just generally pointed out here that when you tend to have a significant immune response is when the virus has broken through this barrier and gotten into the systemic circulation, the bloodstream or in the lymph nodes. You can imagine here, you're well, you're fit and active, you have strong mucosal immunity, 
but time may have passed, your immunity comes down, and then you're going again okay, and then you get quite stressed, or maybe you've had some other thing happen and you're unwell, and this barrier falls down temporarily. And if you are exposed at that point, you can then end up with an infection. So even though you have immunity, never think of it as a flat line. It does alter. And so therefore, everyone has to be vigilant, whatever your vaccination status. I think that's an important point for people to understand. This is it showing it in a different way. And again, we have here the virus coming in through the nose. It will infect the upper airways here. And I've got this almost like a defense line. And once the virus, if the virus can break through this defense, it can then get into the systemic immunity, which is where the lymph nodes are. This is These are all lymph nodes. It then will trigger an immune response, and then you will get antibody production. Important to know that if the virus hasn't really broken through this mucosal defense, oftentimes there are no symptoms. And that's where we have that issue of asymptomatic infection. And I differentiate it from subclinical infection. So even those bits I'll explain a little bit later on, but it helps you to understand those discussions people have where they say they've never had COVID. Everybody has been exposed, but some people will have asymptomatic infection because they have very adequate mucosal immunity. This is again a principle with regards to the relevant types of antibodies. Now, these are not all the antibodies. I'd covered them in a previous section, but in terms of mucosal immunity, I wanted you to understand these important differences. This is an IgG antibody, and these ends both are able to stick to any antigen that it's, it, it's, it's aligned to. Um, the difference is in terms of size. This is an IgA antibody, and it's usually attached. When it's in the bloodstream, it's usually single, but in the mucosal surfaces, it tends to be double like this. And then you have the IgA dimer with the secretory component. And so this is then what attaches to the mucus. And then when it binds to virus, the virus gets stuck or even bacteria, whatever it's targeting, gets stuck in the mucus so that it can't then infect anything. So IgA is an important part of mucosal immunity, especially with the secretory component. Here is an example of what it would look like. And again, we've just got an epithelial layer here of cells. This is what it would have to break through. On top of it is the mucus. And in the mucus, you have the IgA. Then you have these antimicrobial proteins that the cells will produce. And then on top here, these are bacteria at the moment, but the principle is the same whether bacteria or viruses, is that they can't penetrate this to then get into infecting the cells. So this is part of the layer. And so you need IgA antibodies that recognize specific either bacteria or viruses. And then that is what will aid this mucosal protection. So it's just to remember mucosal and mucus. Mucus is a critical part of that uh, physical barrier. And here you have an example of IgA antibodies probably targeting SARS-CoV-2, the binding to it. And then when they bind to it, an important difference between IgA antibodies and IgG is that they are not trying to trigger an inflammatory response because they already have the secretory component on it. So once they stick to the virus, the virus is then stuck in the mucus, kind of like quicksand, and there is nowhere for it to go. And then it will be put out of the body either when you cough, sneeze, or swallow. So IgA antibodies, again, an important part of that mucosal defense. Here I mention, and again, I'll go into this more in more detail, is the sinuses. And the reason I've brought this into the course is because a lot of people don't understand that actually the Omicron virus, different from the previous variants, has a really strong predilection for infecting the sinuses. So you have the frontal sinus here. These are the ethmoidal sinuses, maxillary sinuses in the cheekbones here. This is what it looks like. This is the front view. These are the frontal sinuses here. So these sinuses can become, in my view, chronically infected with Omicron and oftentimes without many symptoms. 
My concern has always been this sinus, this phenoid sinus, which will come to later, because if this one becomes infected, it is very close to the base of the brain and could be part of the reason that we see neurological complications around the Omicron infection, different from some of the other variants. But we'll come to that in a little bit. And as usual, I always mention interferon. Interferon is going to be a story that goes through this whole course. And it's because it's so critical. In reality, by the end of this course, everyone will understand that interferon is the central player in determining severity of disease and potentially even determining long-term symptoms associated with the disease. So interferon, you just have to remember, is a signaling molecule. When a cell becomes infected, it then releases interferon. It warns other cells to sw switch off their protein-making machinery. It will also signal to the uh, immune system that this cell needs to be killed. And then it will also pull in the immune system to be able to target the area. So it's a very, very important molecule, cytokine. And critically, this virus, SARS-CoV-2, acts to deliberately block interferon. And it does so exceptionally well, better than most viruses. And this is part of the reason why it has been able to spread so effectively across the world. And this interferon is also part of the reason why you have severe disease, which again, we will come to uh, later on. So that battle against COVID-19 begins in the upper airway. That's the body's first line of immunological defense. Good. All right. That's the end of the first section. Uh, thank you very much to um, my YouTube audience. And again, I will put the links in. They're not there yet, but within an hour, the links for the course and Humming Heroes will be there. And so please, and as usual, remember, click on the subscribe button before you go if you haven't yet subscribed. So thank you very much. And we always appreciate your support. For my webinar um, registrants, please hang far while we get ready for the next phase.